Hey, I am John Barker, and welcome to another episode of Here to Record, Show and Tell. So, this episode's all about what happens once you're done with a conference. Once you're done filming it, editing it, you've uploaded all the files, and now you have a whole ton of footage. You've got um, your final edits, you've got your uh, footage from your SD cards, you've got footage from external recorders, you've got all that stuff on a hard drive. What do you do with it? There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, this is just the way that I do it currently. It might change over time and um, it may not be the best way, but it's just a way that I can ensure getting it off my primary hard drives, putting on uh, other hard drives, and then backing up a copy to offsite location. So on the table, I have this little external hard drive enclosure. And inside there, it's just got a two terabyte hard drive. Um, it's blank right now. I just bought it for these purposes. And also over here, I have my sort of one of my primary hard drives, which has the um, edited footage on there, or the edited uh, final footage. It also has all of the you know Final Cut project. It has all of the original footage. So everything's on here, um, including render files, all that stuff. So some of the stuff, um, the final exports, I want to save over to this hard drive. I want to save over um, some, but not all of the um, actual footage but I wanna make it from, go from here to here, and along the way I wanna lose a bunch of stuff that I'm never gonna need again. So let's just walk through how that's, uh, how that's gonna happen. So like I say, I'm on the computer here, but I've just uploaded all my finished files and the customer is happy with them. It's time to do some removing of files. So the first thing I always do is I like to consolidate everything into this library. So um, I clicked on the library and I head over to consolidate. I don't want any of the optimized or proxy media, so I'll just click that. And for me, that just ensures that everything is, um, is in the same folder. In this case, I think everything was already in the right folder, in the right place, so I'm pretty much happy with how that is. I just like to do that just to, as good housekeeping. Um, next thing I wanna do is I can go to File and uh, Delete Generated Library Files. So in this case, I can delete all the render files, um, I'll click all render files, delete optimized media, and delete any proxy media. And let's just hit OK on that. And what that should do is just, you know, like I say, delete all the render files, delete a bunch of stuff from um, the hard drive. Now it's still on this hard drive right now. We haven't quite moved it over to my older, or not older, but uh, sort of slower and um, archive drive. So it's still on here, but it's just uh, removing a few bits and pieces that I definitely don't want to keep. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually move over all the stuff that I want to keep. So in the finder windows, I'll just pop those up. Um, on the uh, left hand side, you can see my hard drive that has all the footage on it. And on the right hand side, here to record archive number four. This is uh, the one that's in here. There's nothing on there right now. So I'm just gonna make a new folder in there and call that yes, Scotland uh, 2017 underscore day three and then underscore arc. And I just like to do that on there just so I know that's an archived file. And over on the other drive here, I know that I wanna keep my exports. Um, and I know I wanna keep this folder in particular. So I'm just gonna, for that one, create a new folder over here called exports. Exports, if I can type, which I can, there we go. Okay, so just a simple, good old classic drag and drop exports into there. Um, that's a pretty big file, I believe. 15 gigs, so that's gonna take a few minutes to copy over. Um, it is USB uh, three enclosure I have here, so it's not gonna take too long, but it'll take a while. I'll let that happen in the background. And um, then while that's going on in the background, I'm just gonna pop back over to Final Cut and go to File. And then, um, actually first I wanna select the uh, given event and the projects that I wanna copy over. And then I'm gonna to go to file and copy projects to library. I'm gonna make a new library. And then in that uh, here to record arc in the right place, I'm gonna call this yeah, Scotland 2017 underscore day three arc. And that will create um, Final Cut Pro, sorry, Final Cut Pro library without any of the optimized media or the proxy media and just the stuff that I want to keep. Hit okay on that. And this is the thing that will take a while. Um, the computer will, 
in the background. Final Cut will do a lot of media management here, you can see. And what it'll do is copy projects over to the library. So I think I want to just let that happen and I'll come back in a few minutes and uh, we'll see how we got on. It's been about an hour or so and all the footage has now uh, copied over to uh, this hard drive, from this hard drive to this hard drive. Um, and I'm just going to have a little poke through, make sure everything's okay in there. Uh, like I said, on the uh, left hand side is the original footage from this uh, hard drive here, um, which I edited it off and all that good stuff. And then on the other side, uh, this side here, we have this hard drive, which will be my you know archival hard drive. Um, what I can see in the folder is that I have that exports file that I copied over, that's fine. And then I he here I have the Final Cut library. It's 227 gigs. Let's take a look at the other one. Um, that one's 227 gigs as well, which is perfectly fine. That means that everything that was in there is now living over here. Um, some things I like to do is just check in here, take a look at the um, original media, make sure nothing is referencing another file somewhere else. But I can see um, each of these uh, little clips, they all live in here, so that's good. Let's get back out again, and um, that's that. One final thing I like to do, just to make sure I have it for future, if I do need to re-edit any of these things. So I have my edit file, I have my master recordings from the conference itself, um, and then I like to also just bring over the, um, the camera recordings as well, just in case, you know, in a few months time, something needs edited, or in a few weeks time even. So it's good to have. Uh, it probably isn't taking up that much space. If I look in the footage folder here, I have the G25, that's one of the cameras, and the XA10, that's another camera. Um, these other two are master recordings, and some of that stuff has been copied over, the stuff that's needed. The other stuff hasn't been copied over. I'll never need that again, because it was just a backup at the time. But I will take these two camera folders, jump in here, maybe make a new folder called footage, and uh, I'll just copy paste them over here into this. And that will take some time to copy over as well. That's 70 gigs, so it's, it's, plenty, of, um, it's plenty of footage, but 70 gigs um, for the comfort of having that backup, I think it's worth it uh, just to copy it over there, make sure it's in there. If the customer comes back to me and says, you know, I would like to see that uh, original footage. Uh, the final thing I will do is just unplug this hard drive just to make sure um, that it's completely disconnected and then I'll have a nice little final check in this hard drive just to make sure that uh, yeah everything's on there I'm happy before I end up uh, removing it once I'm happy that everything is on this hard drive the archival hard drive then I will back that up I use um, Backblaze the uh, sort of backup software um, and then you just upload everything to the cloud and you leave it on there I'll just connect this hard drive to this computer for a few days and let that all back up. It'll be a big old file. It'll take a few days easily. If you're on a slow connection, it will take quite a long time to back that up. So maybe this process might not be the best for you. But for me, I've got a pretty good internet connection. So basically I just archive everything onto a drive and then back that drive up to uh, Backblaze. And I'm happy that it's on there. So if uh, the client comes in a few months time and wants something, I can pull it off this hard drive. And if this hard drive has died for some reason in the meantime, then I can always download it from the, um, from the cloud and give it to them that way. So that just means that I have finished the, f the whole project, I've deleted all the things that I know I'll never need again, like proxy stuff and render files and backup files. I've archived everything to this drive and um, I'm happy to say that I'm done with that project. And if anybody needs anything, they can come and ask me for it. Some things that might work differently um, that I'll look into the, in the future is duplicating this drive and leaving it off-site somewhere. I know I am uploading it to the internet as well, but let's say Backblaze shuts down and this hard drive dies. It's not very likely to happen, but it could happen. Um, I could also make a second copy of this and keep it somewhere else, somewhere off-site, just to, at, the, at an office, uh, at a friend's house, uh, at some family's house, who knows. Um, I could always, also thought I would use a uh, NAS unit to do all this stuff instead of individual hard drives, but um, I just don't really want to take up a lot of space on a NAS unit for footage and files that I'll never really need. The chances of me needing these is very slim, so it's better for me, I think, to have archived drives and uh, put them in my cupboard and leave them in there um, and not have them on my NAS unit, which, you know, 
it would just take up space on there. Those things can get expensive fast, especially with RAID and all that stuff. So I like to go for the archive drives uh, version just to keep this stuff out of the house and backed up in the house as well. A couple of things that I may also have to consider is how long to keep this stuff for. Uh, currently I'm in no rush to delete anything, but I don't know, after a year, after two years, maybe it's time to, to let it go and then use those archival drives for something else or maybe just leave, leave them in there. These spinning hard drives aren't very expensive, so perhaps I can just keep them around for a few years. I mean, after two, three years, will anybody ever want the, um, the footage recorded on those days? Who knows? Um, it's not really costing me much. It's costing me a tiny little bit of space and a little bit of money to keep these on a hard drive. Um, but once I put that away in the, in the cupboard, I never really think about it again. So, um, I don't know, maybe after a couple of years, whenever the conference is finished for a few years, uh, do I really need that footage again? That's something I'll think about in a few years time maybe um, and discuss if it's something I need to do. And a final option could be that I could send this hard drive, once it's backed up, I could send this hard drive to the customer and let them keep it. That will be their uh, responsibility. If they ever want anything off it, that's, that's theirs to keep. Um, if they ever come to me and ask for something off this, it's theirs to keep as well. This footage belongs to them. Um, so maybe that's a, an idea. Make a copy and send it to them or send this to them um, so it's not sitting in my house. But yeah, that's just something to consider. Maybe you find this useful. Maybe you have a completely different setup where you have some good ideas. Please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.